These are the three things you need to change in your skincare routine to transition into fall. Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that is your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe anytime during this video. And I'm talking about how to transition your skincare routine into fall because fall, although it's officially fall, is not really about a calendar date necessarily, but it's really more about the changes that are occurring in your environment because those those changes 100% impact your skin. Your skin is not static. It is not the same throughout the entire year. It is definitely going to change and respond to changes in your lifestyle and changes in your environment. So these are three things that you want to look for as we transition into the fall season. Give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. So the first thing you want to reassess is your exfoliation and active treatments. And I'm talking about ingredients like AHAs, BHAs, retinoids, tretinoin, vitamin C, azelaic acid. I'm talking about these types of ingredients because you may find that fall is a time where you want to step things up a bit, but you may also find it's a time you want to step things back a bit. And it's a really good time to you know, really reassess where you're at and where you want to go. So you may find that coming out of the summer months, you are dealing with maybe some new sun damage, an uneven complexion, maybe just like dullness on your skin from maybe a little bit of extra sun exposure. This might be the time to step up your brightening routine with your chosen ingredient of choice like vitamin C or tranexamic acid. You know, you really want to reassess where your skin is at as you're entering into this new season and really think about your goals and how your skin has changed. But I do have to say as the, for me personally, as the fall like starts to get cooler and darker and um, you know, the heating starts to go on a little bit more frequently in my house, I do find that my combination skin starts to go a lot more dry. And then of course, as I got into winter, I'm just like full blown dry, right? And so that's where I'm gonna reassess again. And that's where I might find myself pulling back from these types of ingredients because the sensitivity reoccurs, right? So you really do need to assess this for yourself. And that's why I, I am saying maybe you step it up and maybe you step it back. You really have to tune into your skin. You may notice that your skin is more balanced in the fall than it is in the winter or in the summertime, but you also may find more dryness, more sensitivity, maybe even more dehydration. You wanna take that into consideration when you are dealing with retinoids, with chemical exfoliation, even vitamin C. You know, you definitely want to meet your skin where it's at and adjust that routine accordingly. Okay, so welcome to my bathroom. I just want to walk you through some of the things that I've been incorporating into my skincare routine for fall. So first up is the Future Formula from Agency. Um, this is really my treatment step or my like exfoliation step. And this is something that I always try to keep my eye on, especially with seasonal changes because tretinoin is an aggressive ingredient. And this also contains azelaic acid, which is really good for clearing out your pores. And it also has tranexamic acid in it too, which is a very effective brightening agent. So these are all really great, very potent ingredients that can sometimes make my sensitive skin a lot more sensitive and irritated, right? But what's nice about fall, and this is why I really encourage you to reassess where you're at with every seasonal change because I know that my skin is actually really strong in the fall, especially the early months in fall. So I can actually get away with maybe like an additional application. Maybe I can bump it up from three nights to four nights a week. Um, and I do know that like coming out of summer, I'm usually dealing with like the side effects of like summer skin, right? Um, sometimes you get a lot of sun, like please go outside, enjoy the summer months and the sun. It is such a blessing, especially if you live like in an area that's like, really harsh winters like I do, like the summer is a blessing. But that may mean that you are coming out with a little bit maybe more sun damage and uneven skin tone. You know, for me, I find, especially in the hot weather, I'm sweating so much, it can definitely lead to dull or really clogged skin and like sweat is my nemesis like I break out so much from sweating and so 
I find all of those things are things that I'm kind of ramping up in my skincare routine to treat in the fall time. And since I have been focusing in on brightening a lot, um, I've also been incorporating the Guava Vitamin C Dark Spot Serum from Glow Recipe. I was actually really surprised that I enjoy this as much as I do. There's a couple of different uh, forms of vitamin C in here. They're not the pure forms of vitamin C like L-ascorbic acid, it is the derivatives. I personally find my skin does better uh, irritation wise with the derivatives they just don't seem to bug my skin the way that l ascorbic acid does so this has been a winner because vitamin c is a, a great brightening ingredient it just usually doesn't agree with my skin but there's also tranexamic acid in here which is like my hero ingredient for brightening so this is something that i'll add in not on my tretinoin nights but i've been um, using this at night time um, on the off nights just to kind of keep those brightening results going and i've just been loving the glow that i get when i use this serum the second thing you want to change in your skincare routine for fall is your hydration levels you really want to keep your eye on dehydration because this is the season where you you might start to feel a little bit more dry, tight, maybe even a little bit irritated and itchy skin. And that is a sign that your skin is dehydrated and that you need to up the hydration and protect your skin from hydration loss. As I mentioned, as the temperatures get cooler outside and the heating goes on inside of your house, you may find that the environment is a little bit dry and that is negatively going to impact your skin's hydration levels. So it is important to take that into consideration as you're building your skincare routines. So the first thing you wanna reassess is your cleanser. Yeah, if you're feeling a little bit dehydrated, your cleanser is actually a really important but often overlooked area in your skincare routine because cleansers are that first step in your routine that make or break the rest of your skincare routine. Cleansers can actually take a lot of essential hydration and moisture from your skin um, and leave it a lot more dry, kind of like leaving you in the negative. And it's harder to work yourself back up than if you were to start off with something a little bit more gentle, a little bit more skin respective. And it's not just about your, your cleanser's pH level. Um, sometimes it really comes down to the texture of of that cleanser. So what works for me is to actually switch out that like foamy gel type of cleanser into something that has maybe a little bit more moisture in it, just so that I'm starting off my skincare routine without my skin being too dry or too thirsty. So this season I've been gravitating towards a couple of cleansers. The first is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar AP Plus Wash. This is like an all time favorite. I love this because it gives me the satisfaction of like a gel foaming cleanser, but it has like the moisture and the comfort of a milk cleanser. It's a really beautiful hybrid type of texture. This definitely foams up. This definitely cleans effectively, but it also seems like it just gives your skin just a little bit of comforting moisture, which feels so good. Cause if you have a little bit of dehydration or dryness on your skin, you just need that little bit of like that hug on your skin, you know what I mean? That hug of moisture. And this gives you just a little bit of it while still being a very effective cleanser. Now, sometimes my skin is very dry and sometimes it's even really irritated. And in that case, I'm gonna reach for the La Roche-Posay Tolerain Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. Now, if the uh, Lipicar AP Plus Wash is like a foaming cleanser, like a gel cleanser and a milk cleanser, this is the milk cleanser um, option. This is like a full on milk cleanser. This doesn't really foam at all, but it feels like that beautiful comforting hug of moisture on your skin. Like when you wash this off, you will feel that this cleanser has kind of like gone into all the little dry areas on your face and like filled it with moisture. It's not greasy, it's not heavy, it doesn't feel like a film on your skin, but it just washes away and those areas are just so soothed and comforted. Quickly, I wanna talk about a new cleanser that I've been testing out from Community 66. This is the Hydrating Cream Cleanser. This is a pretty new brand, um, but I've been impressed with this and I just wanted to quickly mention it because it kind of feels like a good in-between product from the two from La Roche-Posay. It's not quite as gel and foamy as the Lipicar wash and it's not quite as moisturizing as the Tolerain cleanser. This is somewhere in the middle. It definitely does have that gel cream quality to it and it definitely leaves your skin feeling a little bit more moisturized having washed this off, but it's still an effective cleanser. And yeah, it's been really nice because I really have to keep my eye on this because as the weather gets colder, my skin definitely gets drier and this is definitely a product that kind of helps keep my skin at a comfortable base. 
Another way you can fight dehydration as you're sleeping is by using that slugging method because this is so great. You can use Aquaphor, you can use Vaseline, you can use sleeping packs. There's a, a lot of different ways that you can employ this, but this technique is really great if you do find yourself waking up and your skin feels dry and tight in the morning. That is a sign that you've lost hydration as you are sleeping. And so what slugging or sleeping packs do, it's just that extra final layer on your skin, you're literally creating a barrier. You know, your skin has a moisture barrier, but slugging like helps it out by creating another one on top of all your skincare layers that hugs everything in, that stops the hydration from leaving your skin. So even if it's left a little bit, you got that extra occlusive layer in your skincare that really helps to prevent the additional hydration loss. It can be a real, like if hum adding a humidifier is a game changer, adding in that extra occlusive layer as you're sleeping can also be be extremely effective at a uh, hugging hydration into the skin, keeping it where it belongs. So slugging is all the rage on TikTok. And of course, you know, Vaseline or products like Aquaphor are what are recommended for slugging. And these are awesome. They're petrolatum based products. And these are very, very, very occlusive that products that will just really hug your skincare into your face. This is going to work for people who especially have very dry skin, but it's very occlusive and sometimes it's not really like cosmetically elegant and I know like I personally do it when my skin is extremely dry and extremely irritated like in the dead of winter I will put aquaphor like all over my chin but it's still not my like most favorite way to seal in hydration and and seal in my skincare um, it works it's very affordable and um, I, I'm not knocking it but I'm just saying there's other ways that you can get onto the slugging trend and get the benefits of slugging without necessarily having to use like a super thick Vaseline or Aquaphor product, although these definitely do work. So one product that I like to use for slugging is the Isentree Onion New Pear Gel Cream. This is technically a moisturizer and it is like a more gel-based moisturizer. I think it will work if you do have oily skin, but it is pretty occlusive. And what I actually like about this is I personally, for my combination, leaning towards the dry side skin, I actually like this on top of a moisturizer. This actually does function as a nice sleeping pack or it can just be a nice moisturizer for more oily skin types. It does have that hug it in occlusive quality that you seek for in a slugging product. So this is gonna give you that same type of result. The reason that I like this is because it gives me some additional benefits beyond just hugging and hydration. It has some great brightening benefits and some anti-inflammatory benefits. Really good if you're getting like those inflamed pimples. There's a little bit of tranexamic acid in here. You know, that's like my favorite brightening ingredient. So I'm always waking up with not only like that glowy skin, but like actually brighter skin and it's working on hyperpigmentation too. And if I have breakouts, they seem to uh, look better the next morning while also holding in all that hydration so I don't wake up with that dry and tight feeling. So another product you might consider is the Purito Dermide Sika Barrier Sleeping Pack. So this is a little bit more creamy, a little bit more traditional type of uh, kind of moisturizer type of texture. Great for combination and dry skin with some ceramides in here. We've got Centella. It's a great barrier supportive product. Let me actually show you the textures. I wasn't going to, but let me show them to you because it's actually really important when you're choosing that final like seal it in type of layer. You don't want to go too heavy for your skin or too light. So this is the Isentree Onion New Pear Cream. Let me show you that gel texture. So you see it's actually it's super confusing because it actually looks like a cream but it behaves, do you see that? Like a gel on the skin and it is a little bit thicker but it's got great spread and it really seals in your skincare without like sealing off your face. So this feels really nice. It leaves your skin really soft, but it does have a little bit more of that lighter feel, um, very different from like an aquaphor based product. Okay, so let me show you the Purito sleeping pack because this looks a little bit more like a moisturizer that you would be familiar with. This is not a tricky texture. It's definitely a cream and it stays a cream on the skin, but it is a little bit more airy. You see, it's not super thick and it just like 
spreads like a dream, absorbs really nicely onto the skin. You can use it as a moisturizer replacement, but if you're really seeking for this product to help hug in hydration, I would suggest using it on top of your moisturizer. And the third thing you want to change in your skincare routine for fall is adding more moisture. Yeah. You know, I do find like my moisturizer is the product that changes the most throughout the year for me. It's the one that I move in and out of my routine the most as the seasons change, as the weather changes, especially with my like tricky skin type, which can like lean more oily or can lean more dry or sometimes it's somewhere in the middle, right? Um, I do find that that moisturizer is the thing that makes the biggest difference. It makes or breaks my skincare routine. It truly does. So some people find that switching to like just the, I call it the next step up in their moisturizer. So it's not necessarily changing out your nice humectant hydrating gel moisturizer to like the thickest, heaviest, richest, like dry skin cream you can find. It's not about going for the heaviest and the thickest. It's just about maybe like stepping it up a notch, going into like that next level uh, moisturizer for the fall and even into the winter months. I mean, a lot of these tips that I'm giving you will help you transition into winter too. These are just things that you want to revisit as the seasons change. You may also want to look for moisture moisturizing products that do contain ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. You know I love these ingredients for strengthening your moisture barrier, and this is something you want to think about in the cooler months because the uh, colder weather, the harsher weather, and also the environmental change, again, inside of your home with the drier air can actually um, push and test your moisture barrier. That's actually why dehydration occurs more often in the cooler months is because your barrier can be temporarily weakened by your environment. And that often happens with the cooler, drier weather. So this is actually a great thing to think about if you are getting a little bit of dehydration, don't just hydrate your skin, but think about your skin's moisture barrier and how to strengthen it as well. So ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, really one of the best ways to do that. It's not the only way, but I just personally find it to be one of the best ways to do it. Fall is when I go back to my old favorites. <laughs> so one that I really like is CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. This is like not surprising, you know I've loved this for many years. And why I really like it is it's got the ceramides cholesterol fatty acids. And that's something I really like to keep my eye on as we go into the cooler months because my barrier definitely can start to get tested as we go further into fall and winter and those ingredients help strengthen it up. Another one that I've loved for many, many years is on the K-Beauty side and that is the Illy Yoon Ceramide Aido Concentrate Cream. Again, we've got those ceramides cholesterol fatty acids in here. This was recently reformed Formulated. I do have a video talking about that. You can go check that out um, if you are not aware that there was a change here. And they actually, they, it did change the texture and it's actually a little bit richer and a little bit more moisturizing and occlusive now, which is actually perfect for this season. So I've been gravitating towards this a lot more now. I really didn't pick this up much in the summertime, I must be honest. So something else that I have been testing out that really fulfills what I look for in a moisturizer, especially in the fall season, is the Pyongyang Yule Black Tea Enriched Cream. What you need to know, we've got a couple different ceramide um, varieties in here. I think ceramide NP and EOP. There's niacinamide, there's cholesterol, there's fatty acids, like every Everything you're looking for. Let me quickly show you the texture of this one because I do find it, it's actually kind of similar to the new Illy Yoon. It's got a little bit of a richer, almost like a thicker buttery type of feel to it. Do you see that that's a little bit thicker? And it's really like buttery smooth on the skin. This has been really nice um, with tretinoin nights because you know I want like a little bit more moisture on those nights. This has been a really good. Another way you can add more moisture into your skincare routine is by adding in a facial oil. This has been huge for my skincare like game. I do use oil pretty much year round, but they are like non-negotiable for me in the fall and winter. They are so beneficial for my skin because I'm prone to dry patches. Um, sometimes in like the 
fall in the winter, I'll be applying my makeup and I'll see like all of these dry patches. I had no idea were on my skin. And I'm just, and my makeup just clings to them. And it's just like, ugh, you know, it's just, like, it's annoying, but it's also like, Hey, I have all these dry patches on my skin. Or you might get like flaky skin. I can get a lot of flaky skin around my nose, especially that area is very prone to it. And I am definitely like a cold weather eczema person. Like as the weather gets colder and drier, I am so much more prone to an eczema flare up than I am in the summer or even in the spring. Like there's so many different elements that go into it, but I do find that I have to be on my game in the colder seasons. And so oil really helps. I find adding more moisture into my skin really helps fight the dry patches, the flaky skin, and also the possibility of an eczema flare up. So if you do feel like you suffer with more dehydration or dryness with your skin in the fall and winter months, and maybe you've already upgraded your moisturizer and it's helped, but it's not quite doing the trick, this is where facial oils can kind of enter the chat and they can do so much for your skin. I like a couple of different ones in the cooler months. The first one that I love, I actually just emptied and so the bottle looks a little bit um, beaten up. <laughs> it is the Ordinary Chia Seed Oil. You see me use this especially in the summertime, in the springtime. It's a little bit lighter, um, but it's loaded with so many good fatty acids that really help your skin's moisture barrier. And I find that that really helps with the dehydration. Dehydration. So chia seed oil. This is 100% chia seed oil. It's not a blend. It's very affordable. It's about $10. And this is very, very good if you have like combination skin and you're really suffering with dehydration. That's my first recommendation for you. Since it is getting a little bit cooler, I have to say the day still have been so warm, um, but it is cooling off quite a bit at night. And that is really where I'm starting to feel a lot of my dryness is when I'm sleeping and waking up in the morning, I'm feeling a lot more dryness on my skin. And you know, even though I am a seasoned tretinoin user, it still causes quite a bit of dryness on my skin. So when I'm feeling a little bit more dry is when I'll actually go for another The Ordinary oil. This is their B oil. Now this is a blend of different oils and it does have a little bit of a richer feel than the chia seed oil. So this is if you're feeling a little bit more on the dry side. Um, this is a really, really nice oil. I do find that not only does it moisturize the skin, it's not really heavy. Um, it's not really greasy or rich. It really just gets to the source of the dryness in your skin, but it also has a slight soothing effect to it. Like there's an anti-inflammatory property that's nice because you have to say as an eczema sufferer, when you get really, really dry, you're almost prone to more inflammation on your skin. And so you can kind of feel that like, ah, sensation when you put this oil on, it feels so good. Okay, so my next pick is also from The Ordinary. That's really the place you wanna go. If you have like never used facial oils before and you're not really sure if it's gonna work for you, you don't wanna like spend a lot of money, you're not sure, go to The Ordinary. Even if that doesn't describe you, but you just like an affordable oil, go to the ordinary. <laughs> they have the best oils. This is just my opinion. They have the best oils, the best selection. They have so much variety and they are just really, really affordable. But anyways, getting back to this pick, this is gonna be really good if you have very dry skin. And in fact, I actually, I took this bottle from my top shelf because I'm not actually using this yet. This is like I'm literally leaving this up here for um, when it gets really, really, really severely cold when it's basically winter time. That's when I'm gonna pull this out because it's actually too thick for my skin right now. What is it? It's the Borage Oil from The Ordinary. This is a very thick, very, very rich type of oil. It almost even has like an occlusive feel to it. So if you're searching for a very rich moisturizing oil, um, something that really hugs everything in, if you like oil like on top of your moisturizer, almost like that's how you like to slug is with like a layer of oil on top of your skin, Borage oil is the one that you want. It's really rich in omega-9 fatty acid and that's especially good for people with very classically dry skin. So I'm curious to know what are your tips for transitioning skincare routines into fall? Let me know everything in the comment box below. If this video helped you out and you are not subscribed to my channel yet, I would be so honored if you would hit subscribe before you take off. I do release a lot of full videos just like this one and I do a lot of shorts throughout the week too. So you may want to consider turning on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world. I can't wait to see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Love you so much. Bye.